Good evening and welcome to the Paul and Board of Commissioners June 28th, uh, 2016 board meeting. I'll call the meeting to order and welcome all our guests. Uh, do we have any elected officials in the room? Seeing none, thank you all, our guests, for being here. I'll remind you to turn off all of your electronic devices uh, or mute them as it does uh, interrupt uh, part of the production. Marsha, you bring them. <laughs> this evening we're honored uh, for our invitation to have Pastor Kevin Beeman with the Word of Faith Cathedral. Uh, right after that we will have the pledge uh, and presentation of the colors by Cub Scout Troop Pack 301. Uh, Preacher, if you come to the lectern, would you stand with me if you're able? Let us bow our heads. Father God, we approach your mighty, majestic throne, Lord, to thank you for the opportunity just to be before you one more time. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your love on this great county, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that everything that you do has a position and a reason, Lord God. We respect your authority here on this earth, and we thank you, Lord God. We ask you special blessings and prayers as we reach out and we ask for a blessing and prayer for the presidency, for our governorship, for our county leadership, Lord God. Bless each and every one of their homes, Father God, as they work in this mission of service, Lord God, to guide and direct this great county. We thank you for the representative of the officers, the legal uh, individuals that are here as well, God. And we thank you for every family represented in this room. Lord, we honor you, we praise you, and we give you thanks. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Kelly Gar and Hutton. Or Botch. Kelly Gar Hall. Post to Kelly. Join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Scout salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, about faith. Telegraph retreat. Oh. And then warm your hearts, that's a future of leaders. Thank you all for being here. It's great evening. Minutes action on June 14, 2016. Second minutes and June 14, 2016. Board meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, we have with us a little bit of a celebrity with us tonight. Uh, Chase, will you stand up and I'll introduce you. We have Chase Skipper and uh, he is the son of our attorney, Lonnie Skipper. Uh, he's already figured out how he's going to take over my office and redo everything. And, uh, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> our future leader, Shane, it's good to have you here tonight. Thank sure. you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. It would be all right if I recognize my son. Sure. Sitting beside him, Kevin Townell. <laughs> uh, sure. He come to the meeting this morning. I told him they're usually too long. And, uh, so he chose to come tonight. So I'm glad you're with us, Kevin. Hold him to, the, to, the, to a short meeting, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Punish you if, you get, if it gets long windy, punish you when you get home. Uh, I'd like to make the announcement that the previously scheduled July 26, 2016 work session and regular meetings have been changed to Monday, 
July 25, 2016, due to the runoff election. Um, so uh, uh, we will burden y'all with having to change that date just because we think it's interference with the runoff election. So that will be Monday, July 2016. Um, Scott Green with the Department of Transportation Director has to announcement of uh, South Main uh, project opening and uh, ribbon cutting. Uh, thank you. Uh, almost exactly a year ago, we awarded this contract to improve South Main Street from our campus entrance here back towards Dow downtown Dallas. Uh, so we're carrying a sidewalk project to connect this campus back to the railroad. And if you've noticed the last 10, 10 or 14 days, it's come together pretty much like a home free set with uh, all the paving happening, curb and gutter, and, and finally sod today. So we are at the point now we want to celebrate that sidewalk connection. <coughs> and uh, tomorrow at 1.15, we're going to gather briefly out by the bridge site and just uh, take, a, take a few min minutes to recognize the people involved with the project and then let uh, David Austin take credit along with uh, Mayor Boyd Austin. <laughs> well, um, it connects Dallas with uh, the Silver Comet um, uh, Trailway, and I, I think that's huge. It's been a good project, uh, even though the overall project took a year, we did build the actual bridge crossing in 41 days using some expedited techniques that we'll probably be able to use in the future. So it's a good learning experience as well. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bill Wards, uh, action to approve the construction contract for the TPO roof system at Mount Taper Recreational Center Gym in the amount of Ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Carries five of them. Uh, we had earlier no reports from committees and departments, but we had some outage uh, today in our 911 center, and uh, we thought it needed explaining. Uh, to the public. So Dave Mumford, our uh, 911 director, um, would you give us an update? Absolutely. Uh, we actually had a, uh, an issue with our radio system and so uh, it, it never affected any 911 calls or, or it was transparent to the public. Uh, but the, uh, the, our radio system, we operate off of a microwave to kind of connect all of our towers together. A uh, microwave system is designed that if there is a failure at that particular link it will open up uh, and self heal and it will reverse directions and so that we have a redundancy built into the microwave link. Well sometime prior to today we had a failure at the uh, at the Braswell microwave relay site and we were unaware of it. The system healed, it continued to operate, worked just like it was supposed to. Uh, and today at about 345 we had a failure at the um, ship road tower site and it took the microwave link down there. Well, the system can't handle two failures at the same time. So everything in between those two failures were isolated. So we had three tower sites where officers could still talk to each other. We were able to bring up our backup equipment. We could talk to the officers, but the county-wide availability to talk to each other disappeared for about 45 minutes. Uh, there, we never lost any radio traffic. We never lost any, uh, the only capability we lost was some of the officers being able to talk to each other. We still maintain contact. We have. Uh, our backup systems in place just for that very purpose it was designed so that uh, if we do lose these sites that we can still talk. So uh, it was not a, a catastrophic failure as in we lost communications. It was more of a, uh, an inconvenience until we could get uh, diversified on site. They brought the first link up that failed today and once that link was up they could see the other link that had failed and it's been repaired. My yeah, question there's... of the day was, uh, will we be getting calls that people can't <laughs> call in the, the 911 center? And he said, no, all the telephone systems work. This is radio communication. Among the responders. Between the responders and the 911 center, basically. And, and we, we never lost contact with any of them. They, they couldn't talk to each other if they were on different sites. Some of them couldn't. Um, how, how long will this take to repair, or is it always? It's just that we're up and running in about 45 minutes. Okay. So the, the failure was two UPS units, uninter uninterruptible power sources, and the UPS battery failed in one. And what that's, the United, that's not United Parcel Service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these, are, these are subject to uh, going out occasionally, and, and now we're working on some, we get alarms on the system. If a generator turns on, we get an alarm. Obviously, the alarms don't notify us if the UPS unit fails. 
So now we're going back and looking at that and seeing if we can uh, figure out how to tell if that link goes down. Physically, the only way to do it is to travel to each site and check each radio and make sure that it's up. And we do that, but we do it, you know, probably three times a quarter. So in order to do that effectively and, and ensure you'd have to go multiple times a day to check every eight sites, and that's just not practical. So it, it is, I mean, this is something that's not uncommon to radio systems, and we do have redundancy in place to, to uh, make sure that, that we are able to deal with it when it happens. So it wasn't a complete outage. It was uh, <coughs> three sites isolated from the rest of the system. We are fortunate to have a director that understands all that. Uh, UPS meaning what? What is that? An, an interruptible power source. It's like the battery that you have on your PCs in your offices. And if you lose power, it holds it until the generator comes on. In some instances, UPS units, if, they, if the battery dies within the unit, it won't let any power through, even if the generator is running. So in this case, the battery died, the shore power didn't come through, and nobody knew about it because the system didn't even see it as a failure until we had a second failure, and then both of those locked out those sites that were in between. So it really, the system really worked the way it's supposed to. Uh, and then for us, we can look at it and say, hey, it worked the way it's supposed to be. It was an inconvenience to some of the units on the road. Thank you for having a clear understanding. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Uh, public participation on agenda items, there's none. Uh, consent agenda, uh, there's none on business, none. Under new business, action to authorize the chairman to enter into a contract with the Lineback Engineers Incorporated in the amount of $58,860 for engineering and design services for the Greenfield Road Widening Drainage Project. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Carries 5 votes. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. um, if it's okay, I would like to uh, add something to the agenda under new business for this okay. evening. I think I've talked to each of y'all over the last couple hours. Um, I would like to add for us to vote on. to give Tabitha the authority to go ahead and advertise for us to do a second budget, advertise for us to leave the mill rate where it's at with no rollback. And there's timelines to do that. And so the reason that I would like to do that is so that we would have the opportunity to, um, to be able to work on the budget a little bit more in case we needed to change anything. That would give us the opportunity. If I don't do that tonight, I won't have the opportunity to do that over the next six weeks. So I make a motion that we do that, and I would like to discuss it a little bit more. Thank you. So you need to do a motion to add that to the agenda <coughs> first, and then you can do a motion on the actual action item. So I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we add to the agenda to authorize Tabitha to advertise us doing a second budget and advertise a um, the mill rate to stay the same as last year with no rollback. I'd like to put that on the agenda for discussion to vote on. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, and this is just to put it on the agenda. Can I want to put it on the motion and the second to put it on the agenda. Uh, All four say aye. 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 Nay. It passes uh, four one. Uh, now you need to actually put the item. Now you need to introduce it as an action item, um, which I would probably phrase it that you want to give the finance department authority as opposed to that. Um, I would like to make a motion that we give the finance department the authority to advertise that we're looking at a second budget that we want to leave the mill rate as it was for last year with no rollback and allow her to do the advertising so that we can work on that over the next six weeks to be prepared for our August 9th meeting, I think, to where we can do a budget and, a, uh, and vote on the mill rate, if that makes sense. That's your motion. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. 
Motion and second, uh, now discussion. The reason that I would like to do that is after spending um, the budget that's proposed out there is the chairman's budget. And the chairman makes that budget up. And um, so that's the, mo that's the budget that's out there. It's proposed with a rollback on the millage rate, which means we would not, in we would not collect any more taxes than what we collected last year. We would like to look at it with leaving the millage rate the same, which would allow us to kind of go over with department heads and see if there's anything else that department heads need or don't need. It kind of gives us a little bit more time to work on the budget as a whole to be prepared for us to be able to vote on the budget on August 9th. The reason that that's important is we need to, um, at our first meeting in August is when we vote on the budget and we vote on the mill rate, so that we can let the tax commissioner get all of our tax bills out to you in a timely manner. And uh, if, I, if I don't work, if we don't do this now, it doesn't give us the opportunity to at least look and see if there's anything else we can do with the budget or change some things around or anything different as far as money-wise on, on the tax collection. Any other discussion? I think it's worth taking time to, to do this and just see where we are and see, compare the two and <coughs> make an informed decision. So I have no problem with that. Uh, what this would have to be advertised is a tax increase. Uh, as your chairman, I, I have never done a tax increase. We've had to raise a millage when the property values went down, <coughs> uh, but we've never done a tax increase. So if we advertise this, the millage staying the same and not doing a rollback as I planned, this would be advertised and there would be a public hearing uh, for a tax increase. So, three public hearings. Because if, if you keep the millage the same and the property values rise, uh, then in essence you've done a, a tax increase. And my budget did not have a tax increase in it because we're doing a rollback. But again, uh, it's something added uh, to the uh, agenda and uh, any other discussion. So just, yeah. just for clarity, this is not voting on a, on, a, on a mill trade. This is not voting on a budget. This is voting to give the flexibility for us to continue working on other options and other possibilities and that millage rate advertisement would have to come to a vote before this board and any budget that is worked out by, by us would have to come to a vote before this board. <coughs> Just like the existing, um, the existing budget and the rollback will also come before the board. Right. Um, exactly. But there'll be a time where we're going to vote on the, the millage rate. We're going to vote on the M&O. We're going to vote on the debt service. We're going to vote on the fire tax. Uh, we've even got a vote on the school board's portion that they send to us. Um, and then we'll also vote on the budget. But we have certain things that we have to advertise for, and if we don't do the advertisement for the public to know what's going on, then we don't have the option to do anything at all different. And so I would just like to have the option and the opportunity to do anything different between a rollback and where we're at today. And the tax, the, everybody's tax bills that you received um, with your tax assessment uh, that you received basically um, is from last year's millage rate with this year's value, okay? So what, what this will do is just give us the opportunity to kind of look and see if there's anything else that we can do, work on with departments. What else do we need going out here as far as if there's anything else we need in DOT department? or any department in the county. So it just gives us the flexibility to do it versus if we don't advertise something, we're kind of right there where we're at. I think there's a cost of government. Um, and Mr. Chairman, you're right. We went through a lot of years where the values decreased and the millage rate was raised up to bring in the same amount of money. Um, but we're coming back out of the economy a little bit. And I just want to have the opportunity to look and see what we what we can do, if, if anything, and this board may decide to leave it just like it is. Um, but this would at least give us the opportunity. 
to discuss it. If we don't do that tonight, then we don't have that opportunity. Yeah, and I want to go ahead and say too that presently the MNO for Pony County is 6.528. When we roll it back, it'll be 6.1. If you compare every county that's touching Pauly County, we're the lowest. Bartow's at 10.3 incorporated and 9.0 incorporated. Carrollton's even at 8.414. Uh, Douglas County, 11.809. Uh, we do have a cost to run the services that we offer the people of the county. And by doing the exact same budget we did last year, it doesn't help us increase our services to, or to make our services better. Since 2008, there's an additional 3,661 homes in the county. Those homes come with families, and those families expect us to provide services. And usually, when you build a house, it doesn't pay for itself in the services. Uh, 6.5 or 6.528 to me is a, is a good stopping point, a good place to look at it. And this is just to explore, just to look and see, you know, what are our options? What can we do? There are departments that do need more help, more people. Uh, I know we got behind paving roads. Still, the number one complaint I get today is when's my road going to get paid? Uh, this would help us to catch up with that too. Otherwise, we're not catching up. We're just moving on at the same speed we are now. What's the deadline on making this decision? Well, I guess I don't, I don't know which one you mean, but in the, order I mean, to advertise it? What's the deadline for advertising it? Yeah. In order to not call additional meetings, you, you need to essentially get a next week's paper. Okay. That's fine. <coughs> what, yeah. what that would do, it would just allow us to be able to have those public hearings and, and, and meetings and be able to talk to the people, talk to the department heads and go from there. And we will have some information, we've got some good information that Mr. Collette just talked about from these other counties, but we've even got more where we broke it down even more uh, as far as what the cost is. And, this is just the M and O part of it, and you know the school system has 68, 70 percent of your taxes, mm -hmm. and so this is just the M and O part that we're talking about. It's a small part, um, but every little bit counts, and every little bit helps. So we just want the opportunity to be able to listen a little bit more to the department heads, listen to the people, see see what the need is out there, and then go from there. And there'll be if we vote to pass this tonight to allow us to do that advertisement, we're going to end up with three different commission meetings and three different public hearings that people will be able to talk and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, somewhere along the line, today, tomorrow, in the future, somebody sitting in these seats has got to make some, a couple of tough decisions, and I think this is just a decision that needs to be made to give us the opportunity to see where we need to go. And uh, we can play it by ear and go from there. But, we asked you all for a continuation of Splashed, and you did that. It was close to 64, uh, probably the best I've seen here in years. And um, that gives us an opportunity to work with where a lot of people end up have, helping us pay. And it does help keep your property taxes down. Uh, the, with my budget, I didn't feel like we could come to you all and ask for a tax increase when we just asked you to pass SPLOSH. And uh, that was my intentions, and I think uh, probably the SPLOSH is the fairest because even visitors who come through help you pay for uh, county services, and it takes part of that burden off the landowners and the homeowners, which uh, we don't have that much industry here, so we, we, we carry this work, and uh, I'm myself included in that is a pretty huge uh, tax burden, but I, I didn't feel like I could come back and ask y'all for a tax increase when we had just approved SPLOSH. So um, we, we've got an item up for a, a vote. Can I make one comment? Sure. <coughs> no one hates tax increases more than I do, I can promise you that. The tax increase we're talking about because it sounds scary, but it's $14.35 per 100000 on the average per home in the county. I'm not saying we're going to do it, I just think we need to look at it. Uh, our police, the 
the sheriff's department, they need some more people. You can't do that with supplies. I appreciate everybody doing the supplies. We needed the supplies. Uh, I love the supplies. It's the most fair tax there is. That's a tax, like the chairman said, everybody pays for the shops in the county. Even people outside the county help us by shopping here. Uh, they help our government through helping pay for that. The taxes, they help our services that we provide people. Is this something we need to look at? The easiest thing to do is just roll it back, but is that doing the right thing? We just need to look at it and see. And again, it's $14.35 per 100000 per home on average. There's a motion. I'd okay. like to say one more thing, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Paul was trying to do was to get something on the agenda for us to have the opportunity. And sometimes you end up defending things that you shouldn't need to defend. I appreciate everybody's vote on the splash. Uh, our county did a great job on that. And we used the splash for a lot of things, such as fire department equipment, sheriff deputy cars. Uh, we use it for DOT, parks and recs. Uh, there's a lot of things we use it for, but we cannot use it for everyday, day-to-day -day business paying employees. And that's not what we can use it for. And there's other things that we can't use it for. We can, we can build parks, but you can't go out there and paint them paint buildings at the park and that kind of thing with your splash. So I, I, I do appreciate that. The fact is, thank you all for voting on the splash. It's, it's a great thing. It's a fair, it's the most fairest tax there is in my eyes. Um, but at the same time, we voted on that, I believe, May 24th, and the budget came out on June, June 1. You all have already got your tax assessments. And those tax assessments is what it is with today's millage rate, last year's millage rate, today's value, that's what they are. So what we're discussing would not be anything different, higher, than what those assessments <coughs> are that you received. And so somewhere between that and trimming it down a little bit is we, where we would like to have the opportunity to discuss it. And if we don't do the advertisement and do what we're supposed to do, then we don't have the opportunity to sit down with department heads and do that. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough top topic when it comes to talking about taxes. Um, but I just want us to have the opportunity to be able to do what we need to do, look at the cost of running our county on a day-to-day -day business and be able to make the tough decisions that we need to make. And this would at least allow us the opportunity and it would allow us time to hear from you and, and there's more information that we have that we would like to give to the public. So I just want to put it out there so we can advertise it so that we have that opportunity to move forward and, and you guys have the opportunity to talk to us. <coughs> Thank you. When I put the budget out and I do consideration, when I raised the millage rate, uh, there was a huge tax protest that said you've raised your taxes. That absolutely did not. And they weren't raised. Uh, all we did was keep up with a lower valuation with millage rates going up. And uh, goodness gracious, I went to a tax protest and I, I didn't understand it because there was no tax increase. Uh, but it was said, well, you get greedy and when the values come back, you don't plan to roll that millage rate back. Well, we have. And we did. And uh, I kept a promise that I said I would do, which was to roll it back and not do a tax increase. So that's why I put out a budget without one, because I wanted to be a man of word. Um, again, there's a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 That's four and one nay. Me. Uh, so that uh, is added to the agenda, and that will come out as an advertisement. Uh, now from our 2 o'clock uh, planning session, 2016-03-Z, uh, application by Greystone Power Corporation to rezone 92.227 acres from R2 Suburban Residential District, A1 Agricultural District, to uh, Light Industrial for amenities for future headquarters of Greystone. Uh, this is important to know that they are looking forward and uh, we, we have a, a lot of gentlemen here from Greystone tonight uh, to say the majority of our customers come from Paulden, and our headquarters probably ought to be in Paulden. So uh, the headquarters of Greystone, potential parking, and here's a new one for us. Uh, they're putting in a solar farm, and 
I think there's some opportunity uh, with Mr. Rudy Eccles, we want to talk to him about it, to, for the public to invest in that solar farm. Property is located in land lots 1048, 1049, 1050, 1051. 1110, 1111, 1112, and 1113. <coughs> District 2, Section 3 on the north side of Ridge Road, east of Ridge Road, and west of State Route 92, uh, Hiram Douglasville Highway. This is in post 3, recommendation for approval is 501, and there are 16 stipulations. Do I hear a motion? A motion to approve Greystone Power Corporation as rezoning, including the 16 <coughs> stipulations. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? It carries 5 0. Um, there is a collusion of our regular business session. There's no executive session. But we do have uh, Kirsten Liberty uh, wanting to speak about amenities. Good evening, gentlemen, and Ms. Skipper. It's been a while, but it's so good to be back up here again uh, talking to you all. I wanted to start off tonight with a little bit of a joke, but you'll hear about why that's important in a, in a few minutes. The other day on Facebook, when I was looking around, there was a, one of those memes that came up, and it was a, a pan full of bacon. And for those that know me, know I love bacon. I can eat bacon on anything. And, and the funny part of it was said, um, science shows that if you eat bacon every morning of your life, that you take three seconds or three minutes off of your life for every piece you eat. And the joke of it was, then if that were true, I should have died in 1872. <laughs> and, and that's the truth. And the reason I brought that up, but it made me giggle a little bit, is because what I want to talk to you about tonight started in 1884. Uh, we in Paulding County are, are pretty lucky. We have one of the oldest living churches ever. Started in 1884, and it's Mount Moriah Church. And I cannot say um, who started it. I don't know the, the gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, or the families that started it. But I think it's absolutely amazing that we have a real living church that started that long ago. I live on the WMA, and there was a church there in 1862, but the church is no longer standing. It burned, and it is not the same church that stands today by the same name. So I think it's pretty neat that we have a living church. With that being said, we have a problem. 30 years ago, I was 10. 30 years ago, the members of that church started asking for a water line to be run to their church. These guys have dug three wells. Two of them are 500 feet deep. All of them are dry. So I started thinking to myself, why would that be? We have a well. Our well is 365 feet deep. We did have to have it deepened when we, lived, when we moved there four years ago. Why is a 500 foot well dry? So what did I do? I called geologists that I know. I called the meteorology department at the National Weather Service office. And I started talking to experts. And I started asking them, what's going on in Paulding County? How is it that we can have a well that's 500 feet deep and dry? Well, when you start pulling down the water table by putting in a million, zillion, thousand houses, and you start pulling out of the, the water, starts disappearing when you bring in populations of people. You've got a problem in that those wells are never going to hold enough water to sustain the population up there. And they've got 100 people about on their roster, but in September, they're going to have 21 churches come together up there with no way to flush a commode. Now, I'm all about being, it's kind of fun, right, to go to a primitive church and have an old-fashioned church service, but I'm not about going to an old-fashioned church service where you have to go potty in the woods. And I think it's pretty important that we start thinking about what these people are going through when they go up there to celebrate their sense of community and their sense of coming together for, for a Christ-like reason. So what I'm going to talk to you about, just, just briefly, <coughs> that road on Mount Moriah, it's about a one-mile stretch to get them onto the water main. They've been asking for 30 years. They've been promised by all of those administrations that they would be put on a water main for 30 years and have gotten nowhere. 
Every time they turn around, everybody they ask, there's no money, we'll do it later, we'll put you on for 12 months from now, we'll put you on for six months from now, and there's still no water up there at Mount Moriah Historical Living Church. There are 10 families on that road that are also not tied into the water line. There are other roads up there, they have no water. This is unacceptable. We've spent over $28 million on projects that I would consider failed. And we can't run water to a historic church. We can't run water to families. The government's job, um, I was looking up just as we were, as we were coming in, the government's job is, is not to provide jobs for people. It's not. But here it says, for most of U.S. history, the core function of county government was to fulfill the administrative mandates of their respective states. In other words, housekeeping functions. Keeping their counties running to keep the state running smoothly, right? Our county's not running smoothly if we're spending dollars on failed projects, but we can't provide simple amenities to our population. And you're talking about leaving the millage right where it is, we're rolling it back, we're up here arguing about that, but the reality is, these guys need water. I know. I'm almost done. These guys need water up here at this church. They need to be able to worship in a place where they can flush the potty in the middle of a sermon. They need to be able to change their baby's diapers and wash their hands in clean water. There has to be something that we can do to make this work for them. Tony, I know you're their commissioner. I'm up here for the first time. I'll be back. But is there anything that we can do as a county to help them out? First of all, thank you for coming. And I am the commissioner. And I do represent them and will represent them. And having said that, I don't know if anybody from the church has came forward to talk to Lord Ashmore. But Lord, if you would, can you give us some kind of an update on what we might be doing or how we might be able to help? Lori's been with us now. I know she hasn't been here two years, have you? No. Okay. And she's more than willing to work with not only that church, but other people. She's helped me in other areas already, <coughs> and I'm sure we can count on her to, to help us with this. At this, time, at this time, we have 30 requests for waterline extensions. And as you know, there has been no budget for doing these waterline extensions. There's been no budget for them at all? And in the, over, the, over the past record that I have found, we have not had a budget for waterline extensions. Um, as you know, in our financial planning, we have allocated money for the, for, for the future years. Um, and we're in the process of working with our Water and Sewer Advisory Board to establish a, a policy um, right now, those 30, the, the 30 requests are not prioritized. That it's just, it's a list. Um, and some of them have been, the ones that we have record of, ex go back 30 years. I mean, we're talking about some of them in the 80s. And um, unfortunately, I don't have any records of any kind of waterline petition that include Mount Moriah Church. They, to your knowledge, they have not. I, I have no. I have nothing in our in our petition list um, for Mount Moriah Church. I'm happy to sit down and talk with them about their needs. Um, take a take a look at at routes. Uh, but we are we are preparing and have talked about bringing something to our water and sewer advisory board um, with a, a an extension policy for consideration. Um, about how we prioritize these extension requests so that we can begin moving forward to get these, um, get, get the churches and the residents in need of public water supply and start that project moving forward. Well, we, we, we've got a lot of their members here tonight that I see, and uh, tonight might be a good place to start that petition and uh, open it up, get them to sign it, and, and let's move forward and get them on the list. Uh, what I had to learn when I came in this is this this is an enterprise fund and uh, enterprise fund pays for itself so that if you let's say put a uh, water line in that runs down that road would you get all 30 people to buy a water main that would uh, they would 
pre-buy so that when you run the water line, you would have those customers already as a part of uh, your team. So uh, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, add if we can get it started, a, a petition and everybody wants to after the meeting sign that petition to get moving on this. If it hasn't been formally done, we could start that tonight. Uh, got a lot of friends you go to church there. I've been to church there. There's some great uh, sermons. In fact, I had a conversation with Todd Tibbetts today. Uh, about this very thing, and uh, we both said we'd pray over it, uh, and, and I know that one of the other churches uh, in our church family here has said they've gone all over the world drilling wells, why not drill one there? Well, you, you know, if two or three have been drilled, then maybe the, the table uh, won't hold for that, and uh, we certainly need to look at what we can do to help them. So. Um, uh, I, I would say that we will start that petition uh, tonight and see what we can do. To, and what we would need then is to have the customers that are on that road to uh, maybe declare that they would uh, buy the water main that would help us run this since it is an enterprise fund. It's not uh, run by the county, it's part of what we do, but again, it is an enterprise fund. So um, I look forward to seeing what we can do to help this problem and uh, move forward with this historic church. And as your representative, I'm going to promise you that I'll stay on top of it. But tonight, let's let's go ahead and get it started, get something formally started as far as petition. And I'll discuss it with Lori. Lori shared with me today that her office is always open, mm -hmm. that you guys can come in and talk to her. And if you need me, I'll be right there with you. And I, I said to Todd today, uh, he said, I'm not the spiritual, I, I am the spiritual leader, I'm not the business leader of the church the deacons are. And I said, well, if you'll let them know that I would be a, make myself available to come to a deacons meeting and uh, bring uh, Lori with me and uh, look at how we can move this thing forward. Uh, a lot of churches in, in our county are on wells, and uh, this is just the beginning, but as you build a new reservoir, uh, which is something all the counties needed their own water source for years. These are things that we now can complete. Uh, when you look at well, why do we have uh, water in parts of Burnt Head Creek in the Seven Hills and Cedarcrest area, we don't have it in others. Well, uh, in the day, and it's way before I came in the office, developers were paying for this. And eventually, if you bought a lot in there and you put a house on it, you pay for it. Uh, but that's the way they ran the lines and they ran the sewer and they built the northern sewer plant. So we have the lady that's in charge of water and in charge of uh, sewer. So um, uh, tonight's a good night to get started. And uh, if you're willing to hang around, then we will begin a petition. Any other business before this commission? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.